Good morning everyone, welcome to another episode where we're building a 46 foot John Pugh motor sailor. So I'm here in the morning, still got all the dew on the surfaces, it's bright and early today. Just start to dry up now. We're going to be uh, starting with that uh, sunroof area, I'm going to start taking that out. And I'm going to move on to some other areas. Uh, one of the last bits to do on the outside of the boat here is uh, fix up this uh, cockpit area. So I'm going to have to maybe make a bit of a play with that and uh, get that sorted. So going to get set up and start cutting some holes. So I've just got this last piece to take out. Uh, I don't know if this particular piece is incorporated into this uh, companionway uh, hatch box here. Um, but it looks like the only way I'm going to get it out is if I run the cut up there, which I've already done most of that one. Do the same on that side, run a cut up that side there. Now I could see that there's basically no welds here, like these welds not exactly going to do anything. I can just hit that with a hammer and knock it off. So as you can see, I'm hitting this with a hammer and it's not moving. All this weld is cracked off, so that's not holding it. So that tells me that this guy has probably installed this first and then built this because it seems like there must be weld on the other side of this, uh, which is quite disappointing and concerning considering you see the state of this, it's not painted. The only paints on it is what I put on it. Um, which means he's half made this, not finished it, not painted it, left it to corrode, then built this around it, um, which tells me that it's not painted and it's corroding inside this, um, which means I'm gonna do more investigating. Um, but it's gonna make this more difficult to get out. I've got my chisel, I'm going to try and uh, spread it apart and see if I crack the welds. A lot of the welds aren't exactly structural here, so it might just crack off. If not, I'm going to have to run a cut down the middle 
try and find that weld so I can take that weld out to remove this piece. So let's continue with that. I don't know if you can see, but it's, that world's cracking all the way along. And I'm just gonna creep these two pry bars. That chisel come out now, go on this side of that world. And I'll hammer that in, just splitting that world as we go, like a can opener. Well, we got that piece off, it's down in heaven now. So we get to see what's inside here. Okay. I didn't know this random piece of something was in there. Other than that, there's just that uh, plate that slides back and forth. The guy over the cabin. We won't use this. Uh, just temporarily. Well, that was a nightmare. I'm glad I got that piece off because if you ever need to do work on that you wouldn't want the welds to be on the inside um, so I'm going to have to clean these up and that's going to get filled in but uh, you can sort of see that that, uh, that plate which is about that high you got all this room underneath. I've been giving this a bit of thought, and I think that's way too high. If I lower that, keep this box the same, lower those uh, what are they, L brackets, the L, L pieces that they've welded on there, gives us a lot more space in between, and we'll be able to slide the washboards up on top of the companion way uh, latch there. So, uh, this looks like I'm going to have a bit of work fixing this up. Uh, yeah. Alright. But uh, going to have to neaten this hole up. Ready for the laser cutters. Take some dimensions. And uh, get a piece made up to sit in here. I uh, may look at putting some more reinforcing in as well. Uh, maybe put a beam through the middle. Um, so that when I do put the plate on, it's a lot easier, it's going to sit on top. Uh, but uh, at least we got it off. It only took a couple of hours. So I'll just finish cleaning it up. Alright, sitting here in my cockpit. That doesn't sound too good. I'm sitting down by the companion way here, and we're going to go on with a few jobs in the cockpit here. I didn't end up painting this because I uh, was a bit unsure on what I want to keep and what I don't want to keep. So we have a look around each one of these windows and they've tacked in all these stainless steel uh, pieces. And it looks as if they were just going to sit the windows in this groove here, maybe just glue them in with a bit of sticker plex. I don't like that idea, I reckon that's uh, 
just got a bit of trouble waiting to happen so they're just going to insert one in here and maybe glue it in um, it looks like they could have tried to slip it in between the, the grooves here they left a bit of a space um, but the, it just doesn't look like it's going to work so see you would just put a bead of sticker flex on there press press a bit of perspex into them it's not a lot of uh like adhesive area on that i'm not exactly happy with this whole process so i'd be happier to take all these tacks off remove all these pieces of stainless and then do what i'm going to do on the inside and weld in studs slip a larger piece of uh perspex over the window and then uh we'll, we'll clamp that down with a rubber gasket so that would fix the window issue and before you do that you i'd blast this again and get it all painted properly now i'm a little bit unsure of the height so i've got uh my head can if i stand up straight my head will rest against these beams stand up straight my head can basically touch the top of there so a little bit unsure whether or not i want to raise this a bit and we've got these steps down here and as i lower myself down it gets awfully close to banging my head on here so i mean i'm not six foot tall um and i don't want the idea of maybe clashing myself out on this thing so i may be looking at raising this so i don't want to put a lot of work into it yet although i've been walking around this boat a fair bit and you know it's not that much trouble just to uh be mindful where my head is at and get in here and when i'm in here if i just relax a little bit you know i can get my hand in here and i've got a bit of space so as long as i'm not thinking i'm going to stand up nice and straight so it's not a bad setup it's probably usable it's a lot of work to move it so it's probably not worth doing uh, i am used to working on submarines so you know i'm used to crouching over when i'm out here anyway i'll probably be sitting down so probably leave it you know if it bugs me too much then i'll probably get into maybe lifting the roof a little bit the higher i go with the roof the more issues i'm going to have with having a boom come over the top of it um so the lower the better so to go on with our next job i might start looking at this companionway entrance so with this companionway one of the things i'm not too pleased with is how high this 50 mil angle line is so that box out the front here that's 80 mil high so we've got 80 mil of space to use inside that box and then we've put 50 mil R uh, angle line on here so that, that leaves us with 30 mil in that box so then they've gone and put this little cover on the top which is nice they've done a good job there that's 20 mil so in between they've only got this big galvanized plate to slide back and forth to the top um thing I, i'm thinking about is there's a lot of wasted space in there so i mean basically 50 mil of wasted space so what we could think about would be this being an aft cabin means we've got no aft storage out here there's no lazarettes underneath any of these seats um, there's no sort of lazarettes out there um, so when you take your washboards out you've got to put them somewhere so you would probably hand them inside the the saloon area there and you'd stow them away somewhere maybe under one of the couches or something or under the staircase but what we could be doing is not having 50 mil uh, angle line on you dropping it down to maybe 20 to 25 mil giving us another 20 mil of clearance here 
and then as you take your washboards out sit them on top of here and push them all out the way so that they're stored inside this uh, little compartment uh, so yeah we don't have to look for a spot for a, a washboard uh, that being said this is also galvanizing you know I don't want galvanized on here so that's going uh, I, I think they've done a good job making that box out there um, but I may need to cut that box out to get this angle iron off um, and then remake the top and actually put some proper slides in um, you can use wood to slide you can also use uh, brass um, as a self lubricating metal uh, there's a few options that we've got we can run linear slide bearings but uh, might just use the angle line and then uh, even put a teflon strip on it to make it slide nice and smooth so we'll get on to doing some work in the cockpit here to start finishing off So that's all the windows taken care of. We've got all those boards off. I've just got to clean, clean up a few of the uh, tacks. And uh, then we can go around and work out how we're going to attach our windows. So next up, I'm going to take out this So I've got the piece out from this uh, companion way here, polygon shape that we've got here. And uh, we've got what I didn't want to happen, they've done is they welded, fully welded all the way up this piece. Now I can't get to that with the grinder having this box in the way, which means I've got a little bit more work having to remove that box. So I'm going to take all these angle lines off um, which will drop this down and we can put our washboards and everything all in the same spot uh, so we're going to continue on with that a couple of little jobs that we're going to get to is these steps um, they're probably fine now they are they're in a good position to walk up and down however it's odd that they've just come out here on a 90 degree there uh, they could have just continued on all the way out here and then you wouldn't have this sharp corner to bang into uh, even if they were going to put a you know like a I don't know anything on here like a, a teak or wooden step um, still don't see any reason to have this nice sharp edge here and even this maybe they put that there to have water drain that way me, I'd probably just weld these in with a 5 to 10 degree incline on them so the water just runs off, um, not needing a hole at the back. Uh, we've got a couple of thoughts we might want to do on here. Uh, let's cut these out, remake them properly. Um, at the same time, we can have this come down to the deck with a little hatch opening up in here and have some sort of maybe a rope storage locker there or maybe you could put a flare emergency flare kit in one uh, you know roped in the other one uh, or even your winch handle could be stored in there pretty nicely um, so maybe having a little you know 30 centimeter uh, storage locker underneath them would be handy um, so that's that um, I've still got a blast and paint the inside of this uh, now that we've got all that uh, stainless off um, this Durad here will have to come out because it's no longer useful having a hard dodger on here you don't exactly need a wind scoop there so 
Moving forward, I've completed this cutout. I've recessed this support 10 mil down um, so that when I go and put my plate on there, it'll rest on that side and I'll just G clamp it on this side. Um, so that box is going to come out so I can do the modifications there. We do have this um, post here for the for the mast. Um, that will have to be modified because the mast they bought is laying over there. It's not the nice big one, which is the correct size for this boat. It's not the slightly smaller one. Uh, it's the tiny baby one uh, down there, which is about 30 feet too short. So we've got to swap that out when I finally purchase a mast um, and we work out what foot we need. We're going to be changing out these windows. We've got the starboard side um, windows still to be done. And then that's it, I believe. So there's, there's going to be two hatches up here, the same as these hatches. So that'll go up there. But we're getting closer to this whole hull being complete. Um, I've done a bit of a clean up today, so it all looks a bit better. Um, we'll end up blasting and painting all this soon, so all this starts to look good. Because uh, we are in winter now, and what I was hoping to do is have the hull completed by the time winter comes around, so that all the rain doesn't fill up inside and we're all nice and watertight. Uh, we may not get there, but we'll make do with some tarps and whatnot. But uh, be nice to get all this hull work done so I can get the final undercoat on here and it makes it all look nice and pretty. A lot of all these uh, smudge marks and all the corrosion is just because I'm grinding and blasting and that just gets embedded into the paint and then starts to corrode. It's not the actual substrate or the deck corroding, it's all the work I'm doing sitting on the paint and that's corroding. So uh, this will get uh, whipped up with a blaster and then a final coat of paint will go on uh, and a little look Mickey Mouse and from that point I shouldn't have any other hull modifications to uh, destroy my paint job. Um, so then when I'm ready to fare and uh, put my top coat on uh, that'll all be done. So we're getting closer. So that brings us to the end of this week's episode. So hopefully everyone liked that. It was a bit different. It wasn't windows this week. Um, we got everything all uh, prepped, ready for the laser cutters. Uh, got the cockpit done and I showed you an update on where we're at with everything on the exterior of the boat. Um, so hopefully everyone's enjoyed this week's episode. Let us know what you think in the comments and uh, we'll see you all guys next week. Thanks guys. Mm -hmm.